led you to write this book? I just got tired of people bad-mouthing single moms. You know, it's just... <laughs> the sayings that I use throughout the book in different ways is, you know, and I use it, you can use it in life. Kids need to know that you care before they care what you know. We're trying to provide in a way that, that we know it's the best thing for, you know, these kids, and they are so ungrateful. <laughs> and, you know, and, but then you have to sit back and say, okay, don't expect kids to say thank you. Not until many, many years later, and they realize that um, you're not so stupid after all. I was so struck that it wasn't about whether or not you have enough money. It, it really was about what is your relationship to money and then what, what are you teaching your children about their relationship. Exactly. The, um, the value system that's attached to, to money, to the dollar. You know, what do you, money, we all need money. I mean, I think when, when uh, I grew up in the 60s, so, um, you know, the, the sort of the running narrative was, you know, we're, we're going to, you know, we're fighting for the cause and we don't, yeah, yeah, you need money. You have to pay your rent. You have to do these things. So it's not a matter of, um, of, of sort of the huge wealth. It's providing, you know, comfortably for your family. But knowing that money cannot rule you, that you have to, to impart those values to your kids, that money can be used for good. Money must be used you know, to help other, other people, and that there are, there are things that are bigger. Single moms, sometimes when you, you're afraid to have other people influence your kids because you want to remain the alpha dog. You want them to just you know, have, have what you have to give them. Um, but I think it's because of, you know, the experiences I had with my parents. I knew that once you vet a particular person or situation, you know, really, really well, and you know that you have shared values, um, that person can provide opportunities and insights that perhaps you, you don't have or, or can't give, or kids hear things differently from other people than they hear from you as a parent. So the Lakota prayer goes like this. Wakan Tanka, great mystery. Teach me how to trust my heart, my mind, my intuition, my inner knowing, the senses of my body, the blessings of my spirit. Teach me to trust these things so that I may enter my sacred space and love beyond my fear and thus walk in balance with the passing of each glorious sun. This prayer of the ancestors of the Lakota Nation American tribe was introduced to me by Candace Redshirt, one of the many magnificent women profiled in this book. Her exposing me to something new illustrates how much we can learn from one another, particularly the gifts many single mothers have to offer if only we are open and eager to receive them. One of the things that we, we have to do is to start respecting and, and, and um, acknowledging the power of parents and the fact that nobody loves their kids more than we do. And if we want to reach those kids, if we want them to read at grade level reading, um, if we want them to go to school, if we want them even as little bitty babies, they are going to react to their parents. So let's work with the parents. Let's respect them enough that they are equal partners in this, in the very, very essential job of having our kids read proficiently by the end of third grade.